Hello everybody, welcome back to the second session, or I guess welcome to the second session of our Fiasco Fiasco. Um, Nightmare you in the Swamp, plan, semicolon the Beast of Sucker Creek. Uh, at the end of the last session we had just finished Act 1 and got to the tilt. Uh, some things were already going not so well for some of our characters. Uh, and now we find out that at least two of the scenes we've got to have... Um, Paranoia, a stranger arrives to settle a score, or failure, you thought it was taken care of, but it wasn't. Uh, so I guess before we start, let's go around the table, introduce ourselves and our characters, and if you feel fancy, you know, tell people where they could find you online and such. Uh, I'll start. My name is Chris. I'm the DM of some of the campaigns here, a player in the other ones. I'll be playing the part of Merle, the mid-30s overweight dumb guy who what likes to hoax with his friend. Uh, if you want to find me online, you can do so at uh, at that D&D podcast, because I'm usually running the Twitter. Okay. Next person. Hey, I'm David. <laughs> <laughs> I'm David. I'm playing Nicodemus, the uh, simple but hardworking uh, pot grower. Who was salted mouth a coffee cup last time? <laughs> <laughs> Who was upset about Nevada Joe trying to get with his uh, high school crush? All right, um, I'm Zach. I'm playing James or James Robert, who is that high school crush? Also, some sort of faculty member from a nearby university <laughs> who really wants to find the Beast of Sucker Swamp because he thinks it's his ticket to being famous. Also, he may or may not be in, this, in the weirdest Swamp Love Triangle ever. <laughs> that does involve specifically the Sucker Beast. I don't know what order we're going in. Uh, we're not, we never go in. No, any we kind just of kind of, yeah, it's, it's the in worst. Right. It's the worst. <laughs> All right, well, let me be, uh, Jonathan here, and uh, I am playing Nevada Joe, who is who is just horribly just everything. He's out of sorts. He's from Arizona, and he doesn't really know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> I hate you so much for making him from Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think, am I the last one left? Yep. Awesome! I'm Renee, and I'm playing Lurleen, who is the brains behind the way back pot growing. Some, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't word, Operation. you guys. Business. <laughs> that's not what I was looking for, but that's the word <laughs> we're going to go with. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Um so I'm first up in the rotation. I'm trying to remember what happened to Merle. I know he had the bad drug trip. <laughs> and he's back home now, I think. He, he I mean we we could the way the game works, we could just skip ahead that's true. in a determined amount of time. You know what? I'm going to let you guys establish a scene, and I'm going to resolve it. So why don't you brainstorm, uh, let's figure out a time frame uh, for Merle and, and this scene, and see who's going to be in it. Oh, what do we got? <clears throat> Where's our little thing? What else do we have to have in here? Paranoia and failure. Yeah. yeah, so one of the ten scenes has to have the paranoia thing, and one of them has yeah. to have the failure thing. We could have... Yeah. affecting multiple people and, and that sort of thing, but at, we have to have at least one with one of those. Or, yeah. Each of those has to appear in at least one scene. Rather. Look at all of the ideas flow. Well, I mean, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to, like, jump in front of anybody who had a good idea. That's the thing. Like, I'm I'm doing a time. It's, oh, we, we don't have any good ideas. Come but, on. I mean, I really like the <laughs> idea. And this is purely, like, self-centered, obviously. But I really love the idea of the stranger that arrives at a, a score being a, a member of the quadrangle. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that seems like it would be super fun. 
Ooh, okay. Uh, before we before we decide on a thing, I should read this little uh, thing for Act 2. It says, Act 2 is where the wheel should start to come off. Things are going wrong. New problems have emerged. Fires, metaphorical and maybe literal, will need to be fought. <clears throat> this is where you unscrew the jar of crazy and throw the lid at somebody. But just the lid? Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> yeah, save, you gotta right. save the jar for peeing in. Sucker Creek Wisdom. Hmm. Okay, wait. So, which of the does does Lurleen know about the love triangle? I don't believe she does because she was I telling. I don't think that's been addressed at all. Yeah. Yeah, because she she was the one that clued uh that clued uh sorry Nick Nick, Nick in on it. it Nick in on the fact that that there was a love like triangle um love, love line. Between, between James and Joe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with a no on that. Okay. I th actually, I think I want to change my my plan. Then I think I want to establish the scene. <laughs> well, I don't know. We had so many great ideas. <laughs> I th I think Lurleen and Nicodemus uh, met up with Merle maybe a day or two later. Um, Decided he should probably, you know, uh, have some drinks to get the bad memories from that pot out of his head and head down to the local bar where uh, the bartender was the one who saw Nevada Joe and uh, James hitting it off real, real well the other night. So I guess, uh, Zach or Jonathan, do one of you want to be the bartender? Sure, I'll be the bartender one. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna say it's like mm, just getting in to be like maybe like nine or ten o'clock. The bar is slowly getting a few more people in. Uh, okay. It's about as busy as the swimming skeeter gets on a weeknight. I wrote that name down because I liked it and I want to keep it and make sure we stay <laughs> consistent. Consistency <laughs> is probably the most important thing about the game, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess Merle's gonna walk in behind Lurleen and Nikki, and uh, he he still got that kind of haunted look on his face. Y'all, y'all really think this uh, drinking's gonna help me actually get to sleep? I ain't slept well in the past couple days. This is uh, I seen some shit, guys. Uh, it can't Nick's hurt. Gonna... <laughs> Nick's gonna like trade a look with Lurleen, a look that's just sort of like it doesn't last this long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just you know I, I I seen some things and I they uh they put a fear in me. I don't think I'm a I'm gonna touch that them left-handed cigarettes for a little while. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys are in the bar, the, the bartender will wave you over to the empty seats at the bar. Hasn't quite filled up yet. And start pouring, because she knows what Nikki drinks at the very... Nikki and Lurleen. Lurleen was in here before, so. Yeah. Uh, which... You folks look like you can use a drink. It's, it's been a crazy couple of days. Um, we, uh, yeah, what, whatever's cheap. Oh, yeah, it's all cheap. Hold on. <laughs> She reaches like under the bar, pulls out pulls out a bottle that's 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 so old it's got dust on the outside. Oh, good. Starts pouring out of it. It's it's sort of a murky clear. It's like she pours three glue shots, mixed with water. Over. Okay, well, I ain't one to turn down a drink. He swigs it back and. <coughs> <clears throat> Wow, uh, yeah, that woo. hits the spot. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's what put hair on your chest like that. Like that fella who was in here with the that fancy belt buckle the other day. He was having a hell of a time with that. <laughs> he had he had trouble with his belt buckle. No, well, he had too. trouble with the liquor. Now pay attention, oh. Merle. You only have the belt, one the belt buckle did seem to be vexing him a bit, but 
It was mostly the booze. You want another one? I don't think a right catcher meaning, but Brick, keep keep them coming. This doesn't seem like Joe has a whole lot that he can handle around these parts. Wait. <laughs> Belt buckle. Oh, sh you talking about Nevada, Joe? Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's the name he gave me, and it looked like he was about to handle something just fine. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I don't suppose I right catch your meaning, but uh, it'd, be, it'd be it'd be real helpful if you could you could spell it out for me. <clears throat> oh, he was in here with that that Monroe boy. Was too good for us now. Changed his name, changed his name from Jim Bob and moved to the city. They was in here talking about the monster and then they left together all like cuddly like cuddly like yeah you know how they are she starts pouring again well I got well that's some real interesting news about my brother-in-law right there uh, so I guess um this seems like a good place for you guys to decide how this is going to go for Merle. So, vote in the chat. Mm. Well, the question is, you mean good for Merle or <laughs> bad for Merle? Yeah. Because that's different than, well, because hmm. it could... Will I, will this particular scene end in a way that is beneficial to Merle or harmful to him in a more general sense? Mm. Basically, does the booze work to clear out this thing that happened? <laughs> because alcohol is always the answer. Oh yeah, universal solvent, man. Mm -hmm. Universal solvent. We got one white, two whites, a black. Oh, on the tiebreaker coil. I think. <laughs> what the hell? Let's go out some white dice. All right. So I'm gonna keep that. So we're down to three white now. And uh, before he he does anything, he's gonna get up and he's like, "All right, now you're sure." Big old big old stupid belt buckle. Look like a kind of like an arrow pointing down at his. His main business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looked like he was gonna stump and cut his junk off. Yeah, yeah. The belt buckle. Big old belt buckle. Looks like he doesn't fit in. Doesn't looks like he don't fit in anywhere. Yeah. Oh, oh. Does he have that real stupid pointy hair? What like the man goes to all them dry diners? <laughs> when Merle even watched that yeah, show. Yeah, like this. <laughs> Pulls up just a bottle of hot sauce. This guy got scared. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That guy's there. Yeah. Look. Looks just like him. Looks oh. just like him when we dumber. Well, son of a bitch, he just gave me an early Christmas present. And he slaps like a, a 20 <laughs> on the bar. And he, he pulls up his pants and uh, <laughs> Nightmare's forgotten that he's got a mission to, 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 to get on now. Excellent. And then, uh, I'll come back now. wonder if somebody should follow him out. He, he he looks over at Lurleen and, and Nikki on the way out and he goes, uh, if y'all are willing, um, I got a, uh, we, we, I got I got some work might need to be done defending my, my my little sister's honor. If you know what I mean, and he shoots you some finger guns and walks out. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't really like that girl. Uh. <laughs> But this could be interesting, I guess. Huh. Be honest, me neither, but blood's blood. Anyway. <laughs> You're out. You're gone. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I think the scene's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Lurleen, would you like to establish a resolve? Oh, gosh. Oh. <sighs> Sorry. Hmm. Um, I'm really interested where this this thing's gonna go. It started at the bar. <laughs> uh, hmm. I don't really know. 
So I guess I will resolve a scene. Okay. What things do we have up in the air for you right now? Not really anything. I mean, other than whether we've convinced the intrepid duo that the swamp beast is real, I don't know that I have anything up in the air. We could have our planning session for how we're going to get some revenge on Nevada Joe in the Beast's lair, like while we're in there I, planning, and then we find out the Beast may be a real thing. I have a suggestion, <laughs> actually. What you got? You mean a stranger arrives to settle the score? Because you said uh, I should. You, you were looking for an established thing? I, I just figured it'd be a good thing to play off of if we had like a, a dangling storyline already. Well, because I, I think I could establish a new thing. Okay. I mean, throw it out. Go for it. What you got? Uh, so, the thing is, uh, you get a phone call, Lurleen. You get a phone call from a friend who's right. saying that she heard because this, this is a friend that works at the airport. And she heard that there's somebody coming from Arizona to look around and that that person is with the DEA. Mm. Oh, no. All right. I, I, that's, that seems like a, something I'd, I'd... Oh, wow. So, I, all right. We, we, that's a, that would be bad. Um, that 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 would be bad. <laughs> that seems like a. I mean, that that seems like a good storyline to I pursue. Think, I think so. Yes. Okay, so David, since you have the idea, do you want to be the phone man? <laughs> sure. The phonesman, as we would. Go for it. Ray, Ray, Ray. Well, hey, well, Lurleen. Lurleen. Yeah. So. uh you know, you, you, you talked to me about uh, letting you know if there's any interest in customers coming in through the airport. Oh, you and, know. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, there is this there is this feller, right? Yeah. Uh, he's coming in. He's got all these shades on, suit like a, like a, I think maybe he's uh, one of the uh, real estate moguls or actors or something. But I was, I was checking the flight manifest, right? And yeah. He says yeah. He's. He's some government man from the DEA. Oh no! Oh, that's he, that's not he, good he for my out, business. He came out of he came out of some some flight out of Arizona, connected what? into Chicago, came down here. Why would someone yeah. from Chicago be coming out here? That's well, just no, no, the flight just talk. went through Chicago on the way here. But uh, he's from Arizona. I was oh. I was trying I was looking around. Yeah. You know I was I was doing some. Some hacking there, uh, looking How? up his, him on Google, and and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell oh, you what, what? The, the D, it stands for Drug Enforcement Agency. Well, yeah, I know that. So, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. But, you know, what I'm saying is, why is somebody coming from out of town to look around here? That seems real suspicious-like. Well, I know, I know, and I, you know, I heard you said there was some guy from Arizona coming out here. So I was thinking, You're right. what if? He, uh, yeah, I know. I was thinking, what if these partners? Oh man, alive! I never that's what they do, right? They that. always, they always have a partner. No, like that's true. I've seen partner. that on television. There always is a partner. They never the work X-Files, alone. The, the bones, the. Yeah, the, I know. The, yeah, what what's that other one? The CSI? The CSI. CSI. Yeah. You're right. Those detectives and stuff, they always have a partner. Oh my goodness sakes. Well, you know, we already the one that's here, we already, you know, scared him a little bit. <laughs> so maybe oh, I got to go talk to my partner. We got to figure out something to do. We can't let that guy scope around the swamp without you know a tour guide or something hmm. well thank you for the call I really appreciate that I gotta get to work now alright well you know uh, just uh, next time I ra- I'm around you know just uh, t- 
I, we'll, I'll, we'll, talk, I'll we'll talk at the Skeeter, okay? I'll, I'll, squ I'll square things away with you, absolutely. So, white or black, Renee? It's my scene. Yep. Yeah, but you, he has oh. uh, Yeah, I you get to seasons. pick how this goes. I know. I don't wanna. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have an idea in mind for if it's black that I can throw your way. Oh, I bet you do. But I don't think I want to resolve it negatively. But why, though? If you if you think things are gonna go well for the swamp drug lord, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Look, I'm just saying. You already have two blacks, so you probably want to lean into the bad. Yeah, you know, definitely gonna, lean into it. Get a little. Like... I don't. I don't want to lean into it. I like my plot of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to say hello, DEA agents. <laughs> uh I don't know. All right. So let's see. From her perspective, though, she is already established the existence of the swamp beast with Nevada Joe. So, and she thinks she's real smart because she's watched a lot of television. So I feel like Lurleen's expect this will expect this to go the way she's planned. It seems like you're sowing the seeds of hubris, Renee. Well, <laughs> maybe. Maybe pot's not the only thing you're farming out there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I feel like Lurleen's pretty confident in the way this is going to go. Do you want to have a white? You can do it. Yeah, you can always take the white die. Yeah, it's right I there. in this scenario, I do. Okay, you have a white die now. So, so what does that represent? <laughs> See, if it was black, I was going to say, like, the camera shifts and you, you hear, like, a little click on the line. And you see, you see Nevada Joe sitting there with the headphones on, like polishing his gun. Isn't he still? Oh no, this is a few days later. Never mind. I was say, isn't he still in a pickup truck in the swamps? Mm. Okay, so what's a good ending for that scene then? Since it's... oh well, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go find Nick and say, and you. I need to find you, Merle, with your. I guess I am gonna follow you around and find you now. <laughs> so we need to set up a we need to set up a, another hoax. We gotta get the beast in the swamp going to distract the DEA agent. Before this is over, one of us is getting shot in the face by a DEA agent <laughs> trying to protect their friend from a monster. That's probably only, true. only one of us. That feels, that feels overly. There's only one costume. The rest of us are getting shot, just not in costume. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, I, you know, I'm gonna hang up the phone and I'm gonna go find Nick first and warn him, and then I'm gonna track down Merle, who's doing God knows what to protect his sister, God knows Arna. Okay. All right, so I guess that means David, you are up. All right. Um... Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I I I got off the phone with Lurleen, mm -hmm. and so she's she she said she's busy trying to get she was gonna go head over to Merle's, and they were gonna try and scare Nevada Joe out of town. Okay. Before this other guy shows up, so it's my job to go out to the farm, and. Uh, Basically, we're going in. We're going in incognito. So I have to go out there and like throw tarps over everything and like hide it. So I'm out there in the swamp by yourself, throwing stuff around. Oh my god! Uh, I I think I'm out there, but then I'm gonna get a call on my radio from James. Ooh, I like it. All right, so um. You guys run with that, and I'm gonna go make my cat stop jingling shit. <laughs> uh, 
um, before we get started, so you're you're out in the you're out in the swamps, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be calling you on the radio. Yeah, because you've you've got a like a walkie-talkie sort of okay. radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we talked on the radio before, so that makes right. Because it's just because in the swamp you don't get cell reception. So yeah, yeah. But there's no towers. The alligators eat them all. Okay. It's a common problem here. Alligators and armadillos, man. Just the A animals are trouble. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. So I just I just picture like like I'm he, he's going Nick is like going through the greenhouses and he's like selecting all of the best plants and moving them to like a single place and then like turning off half the lights in the other areas so that they don't they aren't can't be seen as well and covering okay. them with whatever nets and whatnot but right. and then the radio crackles. All right. Hey Nicky, Nick, you around? Over. Oh Jesus oh, Christ! Uh, <clears throat> uh, of course. Oh yeah, you you can't hear that. I gotta. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, hey James, what what what's going on? Uh, over. Hey hey, I just wanted to t- touch base with you, and make sure you were still around. I I got the just had a a talk with the police a minute ago. Well, most of the morning actually. And they're really interested in helping us track down this monster, so we're hoping you could help us find it somewhere in the swamp. I told them you're a real big swamp guy, spending time on the, the, the way deep back there. What the what's what police? What what sort of police were you talking to? I well, mean the, ta- the town police. I mean uh Joe managed to get taken in over some thing downtown at the diner and they were looking for somebody to corroborate the story, but then they started asking me about stuff and how I knew him, and I told him about how we saw the monster. Remember that talk we had? And and they're all all riled up to come down and find the monster and investigate and put it down if they can and all these things. So so it's going to be a big to do out in the, out in the swamp. And, oh, what? You're, and you're invited, bud. Well, I mean, I I appreciate it, James, but are you sure? Are you sure they weren't just uh, they weren't just putting you on? You know they're trying to they're trying to make fun of you. You know they don't really believe that. They just want you to they want to run you out here, and and try and make a fool out of you. I don't know. They seem they seem pretty serious about it. Especially that dude from Arizona. He seems he seemed pretty excited about making it out in the swamp. Dude from Air what what? I don't know. There was some federale from Arizona that was that was talking talking to the locals and and he's. He he was really interested in my story about people in the swamp and monsters and the guns. Nikki, you there? Nikki? Uh uh so uh 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 but what about so so wait, you're why were you ta- why are you Trying to get Nevada Joe out of jail. Well, I, the, he he gave them my name for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. Well, you know what? I think maybe you can get a different swamp guide if you're going to come out here with all those cops. I'll tell you what. I think uh, I think I need a, a day to myself. Oh, that's that's really disappointing, Nikki. I was hoping we could spend some more time together on the way. Like the, yeah. Just like the old days. Well, you know what? I, I've been thinking about it a bit, and I, I got to wonder if... I, I wonder if we had the same ideas in the old days or not. Oh. Oh, Nikki, that's... That's rough, and you can almost, you can almost hear uh, James, like, looking at the ground and rubbing one foot back and forth. I think this is a good vote before you respond to that. <laughs> We'll always be friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got two black votes. Mm. Based on the situation, I just don't see a way for this to end super great for Nikki. <laughs> Lurleen or James? Mm. 
Oh, that's right. I get to vote, don't I? Yep. I might, I might want to abstain in this case. So, <laughs> what you got for me? Crap. That's what I usually do is just wait and then everyone else votes and I'm happy. That's why we went this long without a third vote. <laughs> okay, look, on the count of three, both of you say it at the same time what you're voting for. Ready? One, but I don't, I don't know, two, so it won't matter. Three. <laughs> Well, let's say black. Okay. Let's right, right. see. There okay. you go. So, uh, James, what are you going to respond to? <laughs> or how are you going to respond? Um. Well, well. Uh, maybe. I, um, I, I um, think here I was going to say maybe yeah. because it's black, you can say whatever you want to say, but I think Nick might not believe you. Okay. So okay. it's going to, because it's a black guy, so it's going to be his own problem. So, all right. Well, Nick, I, I can, I can, I, I, I respect your decision. I wish, I wish, I wish things could be more like they used to be, if you know what I mean. And hopefully, after all this is over and I'm famous, that we can maybe hook back up at some point. <laughs> but right now, right now, I got a dude from Arizona to get on an airboat and take out himself. Well, I think that's why it never worked out, James. You were never really meant for this sort of living. I mean, I mean, you you was smart, but you was always looking out for yourself first. Oh. So I guess I hope you find what you're looking for, but I don't think you're going to find it here in the swamp. Nice. And scene. Yeah. And I, I feel like after. Oops, sorry. No, I was just saying I don't think there's anything I can say to that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like with the with with the scene ending being bad, it's like okay, you hang up your walkie-talkie or whatever, and then you you go to get on the airboat with some of the DEA guys or police mm -hmm. or whatever yeah. to get. I the... mean, it, it's bad because I'm not the guy, so I can't steer them away. Right. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, it's a huge area of swamp, so. It's enormous. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, what are the odds of them finding it? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's taken care of. Yeah. Not talking. That'll never happen. Yeah, that's totally never taken happen. care of, guys. What are the odds of them finding it? I mean, like, you know, one in two, basically, depending on how these scenes go. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, uh, five in seven, based on the number of die left. <laughs> All right, so Zach, uh, it is your turn. So, what is James doing, and where? I guess where in the timeline do you want this to be? Well, I feel like I got two options from establishing a scene. The first one is I can jump back to the scene at the police station. We can play that out, mm -hmm. probably with me and Joe and the deputy Dale and the dude from Arizona. Or we can jump forward into the swamp. I'm not sure where I want to take it. I feel like jumping forward would help get like the chaos ball rolling more. Okay. Yeah. No, that seems perfectly fine. Um, I think the first place that James would take them is probably where the actual encounter happened, because he's pretty focused on this. Okay. So where the whole kerfuffle with with super high. Uh, Merle <laughs> and him and Joe. Joe, are you tagging along? Am I bringing you? Uh, sure. All right. So it's you, me, Dale, and this dude from Arizona, or this agent from Arizona. We don't know what to do, I guess. Renee, do you want to be the Arizona agent since I think I was deputy Dale? Okay. <laughs> oh, we need a name for them. Uh -huh. Do I know why he's here? Who? Do you? I mean, yeah, you do. What? Why are they here? Are they actually looking for drugs? Oh, no. <laughs> they just like take it in the local color. I just, I'm, I'm looking forward to the point where there's a scene where Renee has to play both sides of a conflict. <laughs> <laughs> She's the DEA agent holding other. herself up. I mean, I'm, I'm, no I'm back for if the, you need somebody to do something. Okay, do you want to be the DEA agent? Or the the person from Arizona? No, we know they're a DEA agent. No, we know they're, they're DEA. from Arizona. And they're DEA. Yep. But I don't know if he's there as a DEA agent. Because he obviously didn't flash a badge or anything. 
Does he mm. have a DEA jack? We'll figure all that out in the scene. We'll figure, yeah. That, that no, he's dressed like that. he's dressed like a big old realtor guy. Remember with the suit and all these sunglasses? All of these sunglasses? All of these sunglasses. He's got like four pairs of sunglasses. Hanging <laughs> in a jacket pocket. Not a, uh, you got one in the jacket <laughs> pocket, one on if the you've forehead. Seen, one if you've seen the, the music video Beastie Boys Sabotage, just pick basically <laughs> anyone. <laughs> <one. laughs> Uh, All right, so so we're on our way out of the swamps, and James is inexpertly but intrepidly piloting an airboat, on which are piled our motley crew of what he thinks are suck monster investigators. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> Deputy so, Dale loves this Rambo shit, so he has he's got the jacket that says police on the back in giant yellow letters. He's got two bandoliers of shotgun shells, he's got uh -huh. like a pistol, he's got a revolver, and he's got a shotgun slung across his back. Nice. I think the DE agent he's got like one of those fishermen, those what do you call it? They're like they're like coveralls, but you know they're the fishing boots, the big wading boot things. things. Yeah, the yeah. big wading yeah, yeah, boots, yeah. like our coveralls that go up all the way to your chest or something. Yep. He's got just okay. that on over his suit. Did, did, they, did they have <laughs> DEA spray painted on them in giant yellow letters? <laughs> Down the yeah, lake. that yeah, the exactly. He, no, yeah, that, he's got a branded one. Yeah, it's got DEA. Oh, okay. On it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So so he's the... professional. From all that swamp inspection out in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. even, got a, even got a little pocket for his badge to go on to. <laughs> the, the airboat roars to shore. Uh, in, uh, at the, the place, not quite, like almost where Merle's boat launched from after the incident. Okay. Right? <laughs> and uh, James will put it, take it out of gear and, and shut it down and then Completely forget to tie it up because it's not a thing that he does. And uh, so, like I was saying on the way over here, and none of you heard a damn thing about what he was talking about <laughs> on the way over here. <laughs> this is where it happened. This is where we encountered the creature. And I think if you look over there, you can see some tracks. And it discharged some kind of weapon. And 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 this is. You should search this area. This will give us the best clues to find out where it went. And he just like starts looking around. If you had a magnifying glass, you'd be using it right now. <laughs> uh, Deputy Dale's going to follow the tracks, and he's going to see the, the tire marks, and he's still a little bit deaf from the, the airboat ride. Yeah, well, I think I see what your problem was. Uh, you, you was fighting a robot. <laughs> a, a, a robot, you say? <laughs> he dips his hand uh, in, in some black crap on the ground. He takes a... He kind of so, touches his tongue to it and he goes your monster bleeds 10w30 that seems that seems anthropologically anthropologically unlikely <laughs> why do you know what 10w30 tastes like <laughs> i've been through the academy son <laughs> joe's just kind of still huddling in the boat at this point hand on his brow where there's big old bandage <laughs> The DE agent's going to look over at Joe. You saw this creature also? Uh, yeah. Oh, it like, came out of nowhere. It's just big and... Oh, man, it's bright still. Would you, be, would you be willing to sit down and describe it to a sketch artist? <laughs> I guess? Oh. Is there any indication from the DEA agent and Joe that they know each other? Like any kind of nod or knowing look or anything like that that would indicate they have a past? Um, yeah, let's say there is significant eye contact, the kind you would frame in a camera shot, you know, back mm. and forth. And then he looks back away. Is there any eye contact drifting downwards towards the zipper? <laughs> <laughs> well... The DE I agent has sunglasses on. There? So. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is what the sunglasses are for. Damn it. <laughs> There's a helpful arrow. No. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. Oh. We're not going to tell them how the notch happened. <laughs> um, the DE agent like uh, steps out of the boat and walks over <gasps> to James and says... Uh, Professor, I have to ask in my line of work, would you be willing to submit to a drug test? 
of it's, course. It's, it's really a matter of course in order to, you know, uh, better ascertain the veracity of these sightings. Oh, of, of, of course I had no trouble doing that. It's not, it's not Professor, it, uh, it's, 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 it's teaching assistant. Uh, but the... <laughs> Yes, of course, of course I would. Uh, we should look over there. That's the monster went in this direction, or the creature went in this direction. And he starts heading off in the general direction of where the truck was. Okay, so I think this is where we need to establish the result. Uh, so I guess everybody vote. Who's saying is this? This is uh, James, the the professor guy. Professor guy. The teaching assistant. Yes, and I mean, okay. just because it hasn't been going super, like if it hasn't been going well, that doesn't mean it can't end well. Right. I'm just trying to decide what I want. Where what I want, James, James. Tell him what you want. What you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want. <laughs> what I really, really want. Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, so as um as somebody's motioning over this way, uh, Deputy Dale looks over and he goes, Oh, hell no! Uh, there's nothing going to be this close to civilization if it's some sort of undiscovered monster. We gotta go further deep. That's where we're going to find it. I thought we were in the way back deep. No, I, th I, I think at this back. I think at this point, we all hear a blood-curdling yell that doesn't sound like it came from a human being. Nice. Way off. Nice. Is it in the dire direction that Deputy Dale was pointing? No, it's really close. Shit. But we can't tell where it is. All right, never mind. Let's go over that way. Okay. <laughs> I think it was over here. And then he'll head off. James will head off in a direction not quite orthogonal to that that Deputy Dale just took. All right. So I guess that'll be the end of that scene. So Jonathan, uh, what kind of do you want to establish or resolve for Jonathan? Uh, I think I'm going to resolve. There's a couple options here I see, and I don't know which one I really like, so... I think we need to have a confrontation. Is just my vote. I think we need to escalate things. Like I'm thinking, Merle needs to confront Joe about, <clears throat> um, you know, you've been diddling mans when you're married to my sister, <laughs> or getting diddled. I don't. One of the two don't matter. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. You, uh, Merle has Joe out in the swamp. Yeah. Tied, tied up. Mm. When does this happen, though? Were you on the? You were on the boat with them, huh? Yeah. 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 Well, well, we just we just kind of scattered to try to find the the noise, right? Well, yeah. Now I can. All right. So uh, he stays behind on the boat. Mm -hmm. And that puts him in the swamp and possibly at Merrill's uh, mercies. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe uh, somebody in a, a, a hip waiters kind of hits you with the butt of a gun, and you wake up. <laughs> you wake up in this hole in the ground, and like yeah. your arms are tied behind your back, and Lurleen and and Merle are just kind of pacing circles around you. Oh fucking seriously! <laughs> oh, hey, come out of here. Okay. <laughs> You got a reason to be suspicious too, right? Oh. Actually, no. Let's let's make this one just Merle and uh, Merle and Joe. Okay. <laughs> oh. Like I mean, I feel like, like I, I am gonna get there eventually because I <laughs> am coming to find you. But yeah, this is something I had to Where do myself. We? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you you come to and your 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 hands are tied behind you, and I'm sitting there with um with my little camping chair and a beer. And a do they old... teach violence as a second language here? They must teach lying as a first language where you come from. Oh, they say teach that everywhere. Don't kid yourself. Oh, did you have to hit the same side? Same side as what? It's that Nicky dude. Oh. He got to you first? <laughs> well, did you not notice my face is already messed up? <laughs> it doesn't look that yeah. far out of the ordinary to me, boy. We yeah, had your some... sister liked it fine. Funny thing about my sister, apparently you don't like her too much, do you? I like her fine. What is your problem? What? Look at here, boy. 
Don't tell me you don't got cows when you're putting out salt licks. <laughs> Speak me true, or this is going to end a lot quicker and a lot more messy for you. you. Seriously, can you speak English? What the hell was that? <laughs> I know you ain't interested in the women folk. At least not full time. All right. So? So, why did you marry my sister if you didn't intend to keep the vows that I assume you spoke to her? What would you know about our vows? Were you at our wedding? I just said I assumed, damn it. Those are well, usually part of the ceremony. You need to go to more Vegas weddings. <laughs> <laughs> just a pastime some people have. <laughs> You're real mouthy for somebody in a pit in the middle of the swamp with his hands tied behind his back. Yeah? I mean... Seriously, have you met me? Yeah, and I'm real close to making sure nobody meets you again. <sighs> Except for the good lord. And he makes a little sign of the cross. <laughs> you may want to look the other way, lord. At least for a little while. Alright, have you talked to your sister? She appears to have been apprehended by law enforcement temporarily something you conveniently got out of pretty quickly and didn't even bother to get her out yeah because in violenceville it's a real bad thing that she's behind bars where certain people can't get to her she's from here she knows how things go why'd she, she get arrested left. I assume it was at the same she left. Left where? Here. The swamp? Speak clean, ah. speak plain, boy. You say she's from around here, right? This place where everybody fucking greets everybody else with a punch to the face? <laughs> she left. What do you think that tells you, if you were a thinking man? This conversation's getting real old. Yeah, it's just you don't like where it's going. If you thought about what happens around here, maybe, maybe you'd be real happy that you're here and not elsewhere. All right, um, I guess let's get some votes and we'll decide how this scene goes. <laughs> it's for Joe, right? Yes. Oh, man. No. I mean, no, well, it... no, we established it, so doesn't he get... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, he, he you get to, to vote how, how it goes for Joe. Yeah. Well, and what I'm trying to think here is that he's trying to talk Merle out of this. Not like... You're not doing well, a here, great job of it. Well, I know. Here's the, thing. here's the thing. It could go badly for you without Merle, like, murdering you. No, yeah, no, no, no. He's trying to get Merle out of this. Like, he thinks that bad things are going to happen to the people who are involved in this shit right now, right? Oh. So he's trying to get Merle to leave it the fuck alone. Mm. Like, basically, despite type, I'm trying to actually make him play like a good guy. But obviously, it's going to get misinterpreted. You're a good guy with a shitty guy cover? You're really oh, good yeah. at misinterpreting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's your vote on that one, then? White or black? Uh, You're the I only just, vote I, that matters. Yeah, I, I think White goes more interesting in if he manages to somehow shake Merle's confidence. And there goes the last White die. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> it's the last White die until it comes back around to him, at least. Oh, yeah. Nah. Okay. Um, hmm. So how would this end well for you? Well, in the... Uh... I was kind of leaning towards like Merle's not gonna follow or fall for whatever you, you know, whatever well, thing you're trying to do. To, go, to tie back into it, I'd say Lurleen. Oh, yeah, Lurleen shows up. Mm -hmm. The question is yeah. why. Mm. See, I was thinking DEA agent shows up and is like, "That's enough, <clears throat> sir." 
Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was thinking too. The DEA agent, like, the confused DEA agent just like bursts into the scene. <laughs> Looks around for a second. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. So this is going to be our, you thought it was taken care of, but it wasn't? Yeah. Uh, you can't see what's going on. Merle gets up and climbs out, and then you hear a shovel hitting dirt two or three times. You get a few facefuls, so you can't see anything. Mm -hmm. And then there is a clanging sound, and Merle's unconscious body falls in the hole next to you. <laughs> and your partner begins to untie you. <laughs> Took you long enough. Does, oh. it, does that work? Yeah. Okay. I well, think you've been in deep cover too long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I need stitches or something. Shit. I noticed you had a few more notches to your belt. <sighs> Listen, I had to blend in. Everyone's doing it here. <laughs> End of scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, oh shit, that makes it my turn, and I don't know how this is gonna. Be. <laughs> Yeah, if we if we go later, you're probably in custody. Um, and this is, I mean, the thing is, this is like Merle's last scene too. Uh huh. We and we don't find out how everything turns out till the very very end, right? Right. I mean, we could establish a scene for you, and then you'll just get handed a black tie. <laughs> oh, fuck. Either way, this is going poorly, huh? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah do so, that. Let's do that. Make... You guys establish a scene for me. Well, all right. So, the one thought I have here is that, you know, Joe and the partner run off and whether they come back at all. But we don't know that until the very end. Well, no, I'm thinking this This is clearly the scene where <laughs> the monster shows up, right? Like. <laughs> And he drags him away. <laughs> yeah, like, Ooh, like yeah, shoots you guys off and drags Merle further into the cell. The black dye means it's breeding season. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's say let's say Merle is like his vision is like swimming. You know, you've got like the underwater sound going, and you hear like people shouting, and you hear shots being fired. Mm. And hmm. yeah, so I, I figured. And then, like you, 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 and then something grabs you by the leg and like picks you up by one leg. Kind of drags me through the water and mud and gunk and everything. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um. So I guess somebody needs to play the monster. <laughs> I just don't know where the scene goes. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, the thing is, we're just assuming it can't talk. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, that is a very good point. If you've played Red Dead, you've seen the Bigfoots. <laughs> so Merle kind of swimmily comes to, and he's like, "What the, he what the hell's that?" Lurleen, is that you? That's a good ass costume you got from down here, tell you what. Who wants to be the monster? If you're raising your hand, I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually face palming. Oh. I kinda wanna play it like uh anybody know the librarian from the disc world? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. All right, so basically the monster responds in something that's going to be non-committal, like a grunt, and you just keep reacting like you understand it. Okay. Yeah. But you gotta, if you're going to play the monsters, actually make the noise. Dude. I know. <laughs> uh, you... What? All right. Um, that's real weird. It's, I can... Okay. Uh, it's, where are we going? Oh, no. Now my my house is way over that way. Can you can you? Rah, rah. Well, no, I appreciate the offer, but I I really like to go to my house. I have really, 
All right, so let's go to your house, and I mean, at least stay for dinner. It's only fair. You did, you, you did save me from them government folks and all. Yeah, the the ones with the the fancy clothes and the guns—they're not from around these parts. You didn't eat them, did you? Oh. Might have been better if you did. I'm just saying. I don't, I don't know if you're if you're on them meaty types or you just eat plants, but. Maybe uh, 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 sometimes I, I I feel like I just like bacon too much, you know. I couldn't I couldn't give give all of it up. Uh, throughout this, the monster is just casually dragging you through the swamp <laughs> by your leg. Every now and then, we hit one of those like cypress knees, and it kind of bonks me on the Ow. back of the head. <laughs> Ow. Uh, Hey, suppose you could let me walk a little, because this is really doing a number on my head, and, I mean, I won't try to run. I promise you're probably faster than me anyway, and I don't know where I am. <laughs> does it does it let me go, or? It's looking at you, actually, it's a question. Oh. Uh, yeah, just this, them, them cypress knees are kind of wanging me in the head, and it's it's making a bad situation worse, you know? I mean, I still come. To, I still come to your house. We can hang out. I'm just saying. I got. I mean, I got a PS2 at my house, and like, I got, I got like a 20 inch TV. We could, we could party. I, I don't like Madden. <laughs> <laughs> I see that scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I say that, and then you grab like tighter on my leg, and we go further into the swamp. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I've got my black dye, which means I'm too white and too black, which is like the worst. Oh shit! Yeah. All right, Renee, you're up. Establish a resolve. Oh, mercy. Either way, this is ending poorly. I for know. You. I'm sad no matter <laughs> what. Um, shoot. Um,. I guess I need to excuse me <laughs> um, I mean really the only thing my character can do is go through the swamp so uh, I'm not of course going to find Merle at this point in time since he has been dragged away by the actual for real swamp monster uh, so then I guess that I would go to the weed patch um, and see if I can't work my way out from there and find the DEA agent airboat parade and <laughs> scare them away somewhere else. All right. Um, so uh, is Nick still at the weed patch? I mean, I guess I'd talk to him first. He's still there. I was about to say, worst case, y'all could be on walkie-talkie contact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How big is the weed patch? Like, is it big enough to where it would... Or like, is it on different little swampy islands to where you've got a... No, I think it's pretty well consolidated in that one area. Okay. I I said that I was describing earlier that there's like multiple little greenhouses. Right. But, but there aren't they? I mean, I would assume they'd be kind of in a similar area. Right. Find They're a place all... that's nicely hemmed in by trees, so it's easy to conceal them. I imagine it's like about the size of a normal suburban backyard, just mm -hmm. you know, in the middle of a swamp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so they've got you two, and just in case you're needed, DEA agents, be ready. <laughs> because remember, all we've got is a black die. So, <laughs> scene. <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess I'll get to the to the weed patch and find Nick. Nick, you here? Nick. You're not hearing anything because I'm not there. 
I'm just saying. I'm not being quiet because of audio <laughs> or whatever. I'm 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 not. I'm being quiet because Nick isn't there. Oh, man alive! Don't even know where he could be. And then the radio crackles, and it's Nick. Oh. Lurleen, Lurleen, where are you? Where are you? I'm at the weed patch. Where are you? I can't find Merle anywhere. What? I was. I thought he was with you. I was. I covered it all up. Can't you see? It's all covered up. Well, yeah. Uh, but I was. I was heading back because. Wait, what? You go ahead. I know. I said you did a real good job. Well, thank, thank you. Uh, but so I was heading back to town because I realized that, oh, I, literally, and I've been really stupid. I. James was telling me that there's some special agent in from from Arizona, and they wanted to get to around the swamp. And well, well, I don't want to get into it, but he and I we we've been through some rough a rough patch here recently. So I I didn't want to take him, but then I realized I should take him. But it's too late. They're gone, Lurley. They're gone. Well, then you better help me keep them away from the wee patch. Is all I got to say. You guys, you, I was kind of counting on you to be to to divert them somewhere, but if. If he's going out on his own with these DEA agents, then we we need to we need to swamp beast it up. Is what I'm saying. Where are you? Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm I'm back. I'm in town. Uh, uh, well, that's Lillian. fine because I think you should go around to the other side of the way back deep away from where from where we are and you and distract them away. Uh, Lurleen, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm down, I'm here in town, and uh, the, the cops here see mighty rile. Well, that's because I heard, I heard about that. That's because you, you, Merle's sister done parked her truck in the middle of the street and <laughs> kicked her husband all up and down, and then when the DEA agents came, they wanted to go see the swamp bees? I don't even know. There's just been more stuff happened today than have ever happened for the police in this town. And, and you know how Deputy Dave is. Anytime he can put on his double bandolier shotgun shells, it's going to be a wild day in town. Well, I know Deputy Dave's, he's driving by, but I mean, I thought Deputy Dale went out with them. But uh, they're all going down towards the swamp. But if you're at the, if you're down there and, well, if you don't, if you don't see anybody around there, then they can't be heading out there. So where are they going? Well, I don't know. I assume they ain't coming after the swampies. Where did Merle? Where did where did Merle encounter them the other day? I thought you were with him the other day. No, you know when he went out with the bad weed. <laughs> <laughs> where was his truck? Where did he go? That's where they went. So I have a suggestion for the bad ending for this scene. <laughs> you said weed patch like eight times. <laughs> Over the radio. So on I a, think the DEA. Channel. I think the DEA agents have like the, the walkie-talkie and a, like a triangulator app open on their phone. <laughs> and there's one marker in town, and there's one marker in the middle of the fucking woods. <laughs> I mean, if that works for you, that was just an idea. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Because, like, we're talking and we have no idea this is going on. <laughs> I knew you should switch to channel three. <laughs> All right. So we're down to three black left and or two black and a random left. Not random. Uh, wild. And wild. now it is uh, David's turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> This can't go poorly. Uh, I'm not sure what to do because I don't want to just pick up right from there. So somebody establish it for me. <laughs> I know it can only go bad, baby. That's fine. Oh. <laughs> DEA agents are converging on your location. <laughs> All right, let's so let's say it's let's say it's like like after the after it shows the, like the triangulation and stuff. So let's say um, now I'm in I'm in my swamp boat being chased by like three other swamp boats. They're all police swamp boats. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna. 
I was going to say that or or either. Wait, do the police swamp boats have lights on, on top of the fan? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, they've got. How do you know that? How do you know that they're police otherwise? So I was thinking either that or after you finish that conversation, the police pick you up and take you to interrogation and try to get you to turn on Lurleen. Yeah. Let's actually that'd be good. Let's play that. That's not expected. Okay, Mike. As much as the swamp chase. Mike, do you want to be an interrogation officer along with somebody else? We'd have a good cop, bad cop? <laughs> sure. Okay, somebody else be the interrogation officer. I'm going to eat a Reese's cup. <laughs> also, remember, this is going to end bad from David's perspective in some way. How do you eat a Reese's cup, Chris? Uh, cut it in half because it's a half pound Reese's cup. Yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> Are you only eating a quarter okay. pound of Reese's? Yeah. Okay. That just raises more questions. <laughs> the other half was for yesterday. So the good news, son, is uh, if you cooperate, we can go easy on you. Well, I mean, you, you you ain't said why I'm in here to begin with. Uh, I think we both know why you're in here. Well, I mean, I I told Dale I I hit the guy, but he said it was all right. He understood. Nobody likes that Nevada Joe guy. Well, uh, I just I got the transcript here. Here, let's see here. Weed patch appears <laughs> eight times. <laughs> Wait, why is he? I'm just bad cop. Oh, oh, you're not playing Joe. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You gotta do voices. Come on. <laughs> it would be I mean, you want a slightly different voice. I keep blending into your guys' accent because I keep mimicking it. Do a Joe yeah. Pesci accent. Be Scottish. <laughs> that that no. works for me. <laughs> no, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, so like, you know, eight times here with the weed patch. Okay. <laughs> And while that doesn't look good for you, son, see now I'm being Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, shit, what was the voice I was using before? Somebody from the South say something. Well, I mean, well, howdy. howdy. I mean, how the fake is out? I mean, how <laughs> south do we want to get here? <laughs> and that just doesn't look good for you, son. But here's the bright side: is that if you give us what we want to know. You know, we make things much easier on you, and all it just takes is talking to a few good old boys like us. All right, that was Wisconsin by way of Chicago. You can do better. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, you say weed. I got, I got weeds. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. You ain't been to my trailer. I got a really nice flower patch. We deal with weeds, so you know, people get ask me for gardening tips all the time. Oh, so you're saying we should search your trailer? Kind of sound like consent. Maybe we should just go. That's a good boy. Uh, I, I would like a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> now you see, son, the problem with lawyers is that only guilty people need lawyers. And Ooh. you, you don't look guilty. You seem like the kind of guy that can work with us and we just move past all that bureaucratic nonsense and get right back to drinking beer and shooting rattlesnakes. <laughs> I mean, I can stop on that lawyer thing. You had, me up and, you had me up until rattlesnakes. <laughs> Anacondas? I don't know. <laughs> what kind of snakes do they have down there? Water moccasins. Are you yeah, fairy snakes? Cotton mouth, yeah. <laughs> bad news snakes. Are you, yeah. Are you from was, Arizona? I was chilling <laughs> Texas <laughs> relative, my bad. <laughs> I think that's I think that's the scene right there is where I just ask if you're from Arizona because, I mean, there's no way I'm getting out of this. <laughs> so I, well. think, I think if you want a really good bad outcome... <clears throat> There's a maybe one of the, maybe worst cop is a, a DEA agent or something, and you, you hear over the walkie-talkie, "We found the patch." <laughs> <laughs> and some guy named named. Nikki. No, no, the, the door opens to the interrogation room, and somebody says they found it. <laughs> that's that's it's... that's beautiful. They bring it on the iPad, and it's like a picture of his patch being raided. There's like a yeah. There's a it's drone footage from overhead. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it says breaking news. 
All right. No, it doesn't. Uncle man. <laughs> All right, so David, you get a black die? Yeah, I gave myself a black die. Oh, you already did? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we have two dice left, two scenes left, and Zach, you are up. Okay. Well, I know I'm catching a black die for this one, right? <laughs> right there. <laughs> um... So I'm thinking, uh, I, I, we ended our last scene with sort of the search party scattering. Uh -huh. And then the two DEA agents have met back up and are apparently raiding the weed patch, which leaves me and, and Tweedledale out here in the, <laughs> in the woods. And I feel like the most fitting end for, for James, should he get a black die here, is to actually find the monster and it go horribly. All right. I, like it. I can see one other pitch. Okay. You find all of the faking gear. Ooh. Interesting. Because that would basically mean all of your work for the past. Everything that I've ever done years. has been. Oh fuck. <laughs> and the best part would be like at the end, if you somehow got a happy ending, if you had to choose uh -huh. whether or not to actually bring that stuff to light. It's like, no, or to continue to hoax myself, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, doesn't, doesn't the game set itself say that we have to, like, even if the monster's real, all evidence of it has to... Right. So, I mean, so can... <laughs> if, if people are saying, hey, we saw it, he could keep saying, oh, I saw it too, I know it's real, I promise you, and just, like, shoving all the fake crap under the table. Uh-huh. Yeah. No more questions, he, please. Yeah, yeah. So, like, James, James yeah. is out on this... On this doing the search and, and Deputy Dale is like right over there where we're separated by like 25 yards of swamp right mm -hmm. obviously searching and, and pulling myself through a relatively dry patch I trip over root and fall like onto and almost into an old stump and inside there's the ghillie suit <laughs> with a little bit of caked vomit on it from the last <laughs> And a pair of hip waders and a bunch of like empty shotgun shells. And Dale calls and... over and he's like, Hey, you, you disappeared, man. Where'd you go? You find just, anything? I'm just looking, man. I had a little bit of a little bit of a footing issue there, but I think everything's fine mm. now. Alright, you you alright? You're acting funny. Did you hurt yourself? I can, if it's a weird private area thing, I can, I mean, I can look away. Did you, did you tear your pants? I, I, my pants are fine, I assure you. My privates are fine, Dale. <laughs> I mean, that's more than yeah. I needed to know, but that's good, I guess. Look, I don't think we're going to find anything out here, and uh, we got abandoned, and it's going to be a hell of a walk back. Do you want to, you want to split up, uh, or head, head back together? I've always seen in the movies it's bad when people split up and we are looking for a monster. So I'd say we stick together, but it's really up to you. You know, serve and protect and whatnot. You're probably right. And, uh, James will move his body like between between uh, Dale and uh, the stump and sort of pull some brushes over some brush over it. <laughs> and right. then sort of head in the direction of Dale. And right. Put his arm over Dale. Is Dale like brandishing the shotgun at this point? <laughs> he... Oh, he he's he's like trying to flex while he's carrying it to feel like the biggest manly man there is. So yeah, he's he's got the gun out and he's he's pointing it in random directions. You know, really bad trigger discipline and everything. Uh, on the way back, at the, at the end, as as they sort of fade into the into the, the swamp, you hear James go, "You know, Dale, I always did like a man in uniform." <laughs> what? End of scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're down to our last die, which can be anything. So, Jonathan, do you want to set up or resolve? Um, this is the final scene of the whole thing and uh -huh. sort of when, when we get to the end um, when we're okay. explaining how our fate goes we use the number of dice we have to have little vignettes for our character showing how we get to our chosen shitty fate 
I'm trying to think about what actually makes like an actual good scene here. Um, I think the obvious one is actually the raid of the weed patch, but I don't know. I almost kind of want to leave that more open. Um, I don't know. Well, Lorian that out. I cannot say that name right. Lurleen. 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 Um, I don't know. How do you want? To, do you think it would wrap up better? Do you want that, that scene to happen? I there, am or do not you want to see what him. happens with the dice and then go from there. Are you not hearing him? Mm -mm. Try refreshing. Hold on. Where I hear everybody doing? else. No. I had that issue Who last don't night. Hear? Yeah, I was on here. I'm actually not on the game audio from last night for a while because. Yeah, I had I to reload a few times. That is weird. Okay, Jonathan, try saying something now. Uh, hello, I am Jonathan. Nothing. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, uh, how about I reload? That'll work too, I guess. All right, I have reloaded. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, what I was saying is that the obvious scene is the rate of the weed patch, um, and that would kind of wrap up Lauren Lean's thing. Do you want to do that, or do you want to wait and just let the dice and then do a vignette for Lauren I mean, what you you could just do the raid, and then you know, if somehow she gets a good ending, it could be like mishandled evidence gets thrown out or something like that. And she oh, yeah, I out. have no idea what was said before yeah. the refresh. I haven't Go heard anything the since the closure to. He was he was suggesting J James's for, scene. Yeah, he was suggesting for his scene that um, <clears throat> it be the raid of the weed patch with you there. Are you cool with that? I guess. I mean, I don't know that I would still be there. <laughs> Are you ever going to be cool with a raid of your weed patch? <laughs> right. I mean, I, I would imagine I would have not remained in that circle once Nick disappeared from the radio, but... Um... I have an alternate suggestion. What you got? Here? Um, we, we open right after the monster came in and took Merle. And the DEA agent working with you, DEA agent special special agent Patrick Valentine, who I just named. Yeah, uh, he's he's missing an arm because the monster tore it off, and oh, Nevada Joe's trying to staunch the bleeding. Well, that's a hell of a scene too. I mean, or, or we can go with the, I, your idea. I mean, whatever. Well, I think we had the scene where the two agents were they located the. Um, they were, they were holding the phone and the Google map with the... We found out where the patch is. Those could be different agents. We have no yeah, idea. We, That's true. I don't think they got That's identified. True. That's true, because we, we were looking at the, the items. Yeah. Yeah. So who was the other agent? I forgot. Uh, something Valentine? You just said it. No, who played them? Oh, oh me. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go if you want to do that. Well, you recommended that, David. Does that count as us establishing? And then he gets to choose I don't know. how it goes? I was just... just I, I mean, whatever. I, that was just my I, my suggestion. No. Whatever. John still gets to decide. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. But don't fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel fairly I'm certain. I'm like... late for that advice, <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so... Oh shit, I told you it was real! <laughs> Where's your arm? <laughs> Where's your arm? <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, uh, your belt! 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 I have a belt. Uh, Nav Navajo takes off the belt and tries to improvise a quick tourniquet. Take oh. the buckle off! <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say the buckle's probably stabbing him in the wound. <laughs> I need to hold it tight. Snake's good. I can't tie it. Uh, anyway, where, where, where is the arm? We got to get you out of here. Holy. Why are you here anyway? I was on vacation. I. Uh, uh. We got a tip. We got a tip and. Damn it! I'm sorry. We we tried to contact you, but I guess, I guess it didn't come through. 
The fucking cell phones don't work in this place. I don't know what it is. Alligators and towers or something. <laughs> of course. I mean, you know that we- you know that wedding that you took place in, part of that cover. I mean, we were establishing it for you, but I guess the timetable got moved up. It just did, okay? I told you we shouldn't have tried to force her into this. I mean, I know we had stuff on her, but this place is crazy. She was completely right about it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right, so so you got your arm, and how did you get out here? I flew. With his arms. (laughs) They must be tired. (laughs) I'd laugh, but it hurts when I laugh. I I gotta hand it to you. Seriously, where the fuck did you get out here? (laughs) Oh, God. I'm sorry, Joey. I'll tell you what. If we get back and I get a fat disability pension off this, will you marry me? I never asked. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm voting black die because that dude's dying right now in the swamp. (laughs) Yeah, I know. That's definitely a black die. Does the monster come back? Uh, I'm just thinking he's like, yes, and he looks down, and then the guy's just fucking dead. Because he bled out from having his whole arm ripped off. But we need two more votes to decide that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. We need two more votes to decide that. (laughs) <laughs> oh, like, Renee, oh, Renee, yeah. Renee, Renee. Going down to the wire here. <sighs> what will you do? Oh man! I mean, he said if you make it out, so maybe it, he just doesn't make it out if it's the black result. Yeah. <sighs> you can just vote white. Let the dice decide. I want to do that, actually. <laughs> I want to make it a roll for you. Okay, roll a d20. Evens are white, odds are black. Ah, in the text box. Ooh, Ooh black. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Camera pulls out. <laughs> There's like a helicopter circling and a drone. Yeah, like they're 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 coming. You hear the other like cops and stuff coming through the brush to find you, and then and... like you just you look over and Patrick Valentine just looks really pale and he's limp and, and he the... slips off your shoulder. Uh huh. The Good. roar of like three hundred airboats. <laughs> <laughs> goose, talk to me, goose. Goose. Right, you've got like the you've got like the close up of you, like, and then all you can hear is the airboats, you know. <laughs> okay, so oh man, you're killing me. That is all of our scenes, and now we are getting to the resolution phase. So let's go. I guess let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So Jonathan, you have two white die, so roll those for me. All right. Eight and roll one black die. Does he get another one? Yeah, just yeah, one, for the... yeah one d6 for the black. Oh, I thought he was going to have a Ooh. second black. Die. So you got, you got a two white. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read what that means, and you can start planning what you're gonna do in three scenes to bring you to. Uh, shit, where is it? Hold on. Merciless. Aftermath. There we go. White high. You might not be dead on the outside, but you sure as hell are dead on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> the emotional or mental wounds you have suffered will never heal. The future is a brick wall. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Turns out that was your real boyfriend. 
<laughs> oh, All right, yeah. so Zach, uh, you have two white and one black as well. So roll those for me. All right, I'll roll the white first. <gasps> a six. Okay, that's not great. Roll your black. No, no, it's not great. <laughs> a two. So you have a four white, which could be worse. Uh, yours is bitter. You know what it's like to be utterly crushed, casually brought low, forced to eat your own words and stand mute and powerless before your enemies. They gloat, and you are helpless. All right, so next up is David. You have two white and two black. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you, buddy. Two white is a six. Two black is a four. So you also have two white. Um, I'll read that one again for you. Uh, merciless, you might not be dead on the outside, but you sure as hell are dead on the inside. Emotional or mental wounds you have suffered will never heal. Future is a brick wall. Renee, you have two white and three black. Roll the 2d6 for me. Ten. Okay. And roll your 3d6. Fifteen. So you have a five black. Yours is... Rough. You are getting whipped like a rented mule, for starters, and you will remember this episode for all your diminished days. The lesson you learn will be profound, lingering, and painful. Aw, I guess you can't believe everything you see on TV. Alright, so I have to roll my two white. That's two d6 is an eight. That's not good. Yeah, and roll it again. A five. That means I have a three white. Grim, the stress and trauma from your little adventure are going to haunt you forever. <laughs> Bits of your soul are destroyed and you are missing a piece or two. In a few years, children are going to cry when you get too close. All your plans have ended in complete ruin. <laughs> Damn. At least somebody's getting swamp married. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so, um, oh. does anybody want to start with a little, just a mini scene, like, not even, you know, you have to act the whole thing out, just say, like, you know, what does the camera show for your character? Uh, looks like uh, uh, Renee's got five scenes, David and I have two, and then Zach and Jonathan have three. Whoa, what? That's how many dice you got. So you can do up to five, or you can just explain it all in one go. Like, I think I'll uh, explain it all in one go. <laughs> okay. All right, so who wants to go first? Uh, all right, so I think the first opening scene for Nevada Joe is just a whole lot of people praising his excellent detective work that he did absolutely nothing for. Mm. And all of it just rings completely hollow because he was completely clueless throughout the whole thing, and this is the most important thing he's ever going to do in his career. Nice. I think I think then cut there to um, uh, a shot with Nick signing some papers and talking with lawyers and police, and him like you know signing something where you see him writing the signature and it says something above it where it's like you know reduced sentence for cooperation with authorities sort of thing. Mm. But he stitches. But he just he looks like you know, completely blank and beat down while he's signing that. I like it. Um, I think one for Merle is is him actually being brought back to a secondary layer for the beast. Uh, there's these weird uh, trees he hasn't seen elsewhere, and uh, he's like, "Oh, is this this your house? Uh, that's it's nice. Uh, I should probably be going." And then the beast gets one of his arms and like lifts him up, and then like breaks the arm over a branch so he can't like get down and get away. <clears throat> and then like his <clears throat> screams echo in the swamp. Oh, that's, that's their... one of four. Alright, I guess for James, the first one will be like like local affiliate coverage with some with some news anchor talking over footage of of the search through the swamp, and then you just see like three DEA agents converge on the empty log. 
and pull out the the ghillie suit and then the other disguise oh. accoutrement and all these things. Um, and then it cuts to a picture of of James's James's smiling face on television, holding up his flip phone with a picture of the monster on it and pointing to it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Renee, do you want to do a thing? Or you want to do uh, do no. Long well, I mean, I guess, you know, we definitely have the scene of agents swarming the way back and bagging pot plants for evidence, mm. pocketing some too. Nobody saw that. No camera Nobody saw it. that. The weed detector drone is gone, duh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, I think another one for, for Merle, it takes place months later, maybe. Uh, you could tell he's lost a lot of weight. He doesn't have that weird, hard beer belly anymore. Um, his his arm that was broken is, is kind of, it looks shorter and kind of shriveledy. And he manages to finally, like, push himself up off of a tree enough to, to get loose. And you see him running through the woods. next uh you see nick in in his prison jumpsuit he's got like his hair's cut in a crew cut you know he doesn't have his sideburns anymore oh man or or you know <laughs> he looks he looks really clean mm -hmm. but and then he's like just sitting there like in the lunch room with you know, other prisoners walking around, and like one guy sits down next to him, like smiles and pats him on the back, uh -oh. and he just sort of like nods at him, and then goes back to eating mechanically. Hmm. That ended differently than I saw it going, so that's something. I was like, pat, pat, stab <laughs> is how I normally imagine prison things to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, I guess uh, the next shot is of of James leaving some big academic build looking building, holding a cardboard box. Oh. It's got a bunch of stuff out of it, including like a broken world's best TA mug on top. Do we see the picture? Yeah, the picture's definitely in the box. Definitely in the box. That's a good. That's oh. a good. That's a good shot. I like that. Uh, I think Joe's next scene is, is in the morgue. He's standing there, and his face is just a complete mess, full of livid bruises and all that, to show just how horribly worn down his brief visit to Sucker Creek has left him. And, of course, on this lab is Agent Valentine, and he just stares at it, dead-eyed and listless. And then Laura comes in and asks him to sign her paperwork. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Holding her phone on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> Just texting and waving the papers at him. <laughs> uh -huh. Don't make me kick you again. Uh, I think the next one for Merle will probably be uh, he actually makes it to town. And the whole time he's recuperating in the hospital, um, he's telling people about the beast and the beast kidnapped him. And... Um, just nobody believes him he he was exposed to elements for so long like they had to cut off that bad arm and one of his feet yeah so he's got this weird hobble going on and like one of his eyes is is all glassed over so um you know he's, he's not doing so great and then pretty much his entire family disowns him because i mean he was the liar who helped perpetuate this thing that got a, a federal agent killed you know you're lucky we don't turn you in, but don't ever come back to our house again, kind of thing. And that's that scene. Huh. You go back to jail, um, where you've got the guy that was patting uh, Nick on the shoulder. Uh, you got a shower scene where you see the guy walk up next to him. And Nick's just like nods at him and then like you know, bends over with the same dead expression. No. 
you cut away mm. before anything happens. Is this but another relationship of convenience? Uh. <laughs> Next? Uh, I guess, I mean, the, the last shot of James that I really want is him on a Discovery Channel program. Mm. Um, uh, looking like a crazy person. And like, being treated like a crazy like person. Like the ancient like aliens guy? Yeah, but he's like, yeah, he's like too far out and he's like, like the the the, t the name tag they give him down at the bottom is like discredited Bigfoot researcher. Or, <laughs> like, he's, he's too low even for the history channel. Nice. Aww. All right. Uh, so I think Joe's final scene is him. He's sitting in a nice office. He's at his desk, and a young agent comes in and starts telling him a plan about you know. This uh, daring undercover op to expose a backwoods grow up. And Joe doesn't even really respond. Just kind of stares at him glass eyed. Just takes like a long drink from his cup, 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 ah, cup of coffee and tells him no heroics and get out of my office. And then he opens the bottom drawer and pulls out the bottle of whiskey. And next to it is the belt buckle stained with blood. Oh. <laughs> God damn. That's <laughs> so sad. Um, I think Merle's last scene is he is, I mean, he's older. Um, he's walking down Main Street. It's kind of like a, a montage almost. He's walking down the street trying to talk to people. Uh kids run away adults kind of move to the other side of the street and he just kind of hangs his head because you know that's what he expected and he's got just a small little box of food and he goes to this little log cabin he's got on the edge of the woods which is pretty much where he's been ostracized to and uh you see the light go out in the um the cabin and then you see this weird mossy looking figure opening the door and walking in <laughs> weird Swamp married. <laughs> Swamp married. <laughs> Swamp married. So, Just had to work that in here. Uh, <laughs> David, you got one last scene, and then Renee, you got like the rest of whatever. If yeah, Lurleen wants to do anything first. <clears throat> no, because I mean, I think I'm just going to wrap mine up with like two things. So. Okay, because I've got one last thing, but it's going to yeah. take place like later. It's okay. We but I mean, other people line. have taken stuff later. So it's yeah. like, this is like after he's gotten out of jail, it's like him being discharged and he comes back to his trailer, which is like not been touched since the DEA raided it. Like it's still got the tape on it. Mm -hmm. And like the, his flower patch is completely overgrown with grass and weed <laughs> oh. and stuff. And he just looks at it and like takes the tape off the door and walks inside and like comes back out with a little box of stuff. And he goes to Merle's cabin and knocks on the door. Oh, with a six pack. I got a friend. Oh shit, the beast <laughs> is there though. <laughs> let's no, say it's fine because we're swamp married let's now. Let's say the door opens. Let's say the door opens and there's like the mossy looking figure in the silhouette, mm -hmm. and like I just he just hands the beer to the silhouette nice. like without any expression and then comes inside <laughs> and the door shuts i like it <laughs> all right renee how do things end for you uh well i think like you'd have a scene of her trying to escape through the swamp but that's not going to go very well for her and then like the last thing that you would see is her in prison sitting at the table in the common room watching crime shows on TV to get new ideas for what she was out there. These aren't supposed to be educational videos, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Marlene doesn't think that. She's like, oh yeah. That's a great idea. She's smarter than the ones that don't get away with it on TV. She says, from <laughs> prison? <laughs> <laughs> I imagine her like with a notebook <laughs> writing stuff down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. All right. Uh, so is that the end of yours? Yeah. Okay. I think that's a good place to end her yeah. story. So, um, thus ends the tale of the beast of Sucker Creek and those who were wrapped up in his weird mossy web. Um, 
We hope you enjoyed listening to these shenanigans. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing with, with everybody. Uh, thanks for, for coming along and killing some time. It's good times for me. Uh, and I guess stay tuned next Monday, fellow, not fellow, loyal listeners. There you go. For, uh, for our next episode of our regularly scheduled campaign. Uh, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Send us any comments you have to that D&D podcast at gmail.com. And uh, if you love us enough to put a ring made of money on it, uh, you can do that at <laughs> patreon.com slash that D&D podcast. <laughs> Just it's, not in real life, please, because that's mildly creepy. <laughs> and you two could be swamp married what was that <laughs> <laughs> that's an option we're actually going to we unveil the new reward tiers how much uh-huh. money is involved here yeah, for it, goes 60, it, goes, it goes romance and convenience swamp marriage for $16 a month you can be swamp married to a member of the cast for $60 a month you get to choose which member of the cast it is <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, thanks everybody, and uh, we will see you all next Monday.